Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and you are looking at a couple of layers of fat cells. That is right, fat cells from a recent animation that I did. And I think they look rather delicious, in fact. Hmm, I don't know, at least that's my impression. All right, so I made these using Moto's uh, replicators and some particle modifiers and dynamics, believe it or not, soft body dynamics to kind of squish them together in this natural looking uh, layer of fat cells. So that's what this uh, tutorial is about. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's make a fat cell. In order to make a whole bunch of fat cells, we need one fat cell. So I'm going to start with cube, subdivide that a couple of times by pressing D and shift tab that into a Catmo Clark uh, sphere there. And of course, call that fat cell. And that will be the prototype um, in a replicated field of fat cells. So I'm gonna add that down here to my schematic and I'm going to add a replicator that we are going to be replicating to in just a second. That will be the prototype. For the particle source, I am going to use a particle modifier or particle generator that is. That's sort of a, call it like a static particle field. So particle generator will create a particle field. In fact, it's, it's you see it there, it's this, um, it just comes in as just a standard locator on the screen. And it creates, it's creating a field of particles right now. You just can't see them because for whatever reason, Foundry has neglected to make them visible for like seven years. I have no idea why. Would be nice if they were visible. But if I were to hook this up to the replicator, they suddenly become visible. I can click um, this little new icon up here in the Moto 12 series to show all replicators. And there's my fat cells replicated on this uh, uh, particle generation array right here. You can see I've got four counts in every dimension, so I'm going to turn uh, Y back to one. So I just have one dimension in Y. I'm going to turn off my fat cell prototype. And for length, I want to make um, Y zero to sort of center those back on the center of the world there. Let me just organize my item list a bit because I like those at the top. Um, looking at my particle generator here, length is just the length between. So I select the X and Z and press C for my um, channel haul tool. I could haul those channels like that just kind of stretch them out and I want them apart from each other but not too far apart maybe just kind of like this or so and then I'm going to add a little bit of variation in here using a, another particle modifier and again there's a number of ways you could do this this is how I'm going to do it here I'm going to do the random if I can spell random right random particle modifier right there and uh it has a few things going on. You can see it messed up my particles, but I am going to turn the position Y back to zero. So that means there's no variation on the Y axis in, in terms of um, spread. And I can uh, kind of, again, I'm just gonna grab, control click those two, press C for a channel haul and sort of haul them back together. So I don't want a ton of variation here, just a bit, you know. And same with scale, I'll turn on uniform scaling and do like, um, there's a couple ways to do, do this. So if I hit 15%, that's gonna scale, you know, 15% smaller than the prototype and 15% bigger. Um, it's a little weird, but you see the range here, negative 100 to 100. So, you know, at zero is where the prototype is. So that's 15% smaller, hence the negative 100 and up to 15% uh, bigger. You know, if I just wanted 15% bigger, I would change that to zero. Now everything is up to 15% bigger. Or other way around, I could do it up to 15% smaller. Just so you know what's kind of going on here in terms of this range, um, uh, uh, this uh, range uh, channels here. That's how that works. You also have an apply channel if you haven't used this before. So you can, you can actually animate this, which is kind of cool for other effects in case you ever want to come back in here and play with this stuff. You can even have a gradient where it will apply it along the um, particle uh, ID there. So let me just ramp this up to something bigger so you can see it. So there it's, you can see this range gradient here, but I'm actually not going to use any of those features. I am just going to apply to 100%. And so now we've got some slightly offset, slightly different sized uh, uh, fat cells there. And now we're going to squish them together in just a second. We've got one more thing to do. Um, now, there's, again, there's a couple ways to do this. I could, you know, freeze this replicator into a bunch of instances and then convert all the instances into, you know, mesh items and run a part of, uh, run, run the physics simulation on them. But I'm actually going to do this a slightly different way. I'm going to, again, press in for a new mesh item and we'll call this uh, merged uh, fat cells. And then I'm going to go over to my mesh ops 
panel and I'm going to add a merge meshes and in and this may be a moto 12 thing or maybe 11 but you can now merge in um, go to existing not you want to go to what's existing in the scene. We've got, you know, this is here what we have that we can merge in here. I want to merge in the replicator. I think that's a, maybe a Moto 12 or 11 thing, but it's really cool. I could actually merge. So I could, if I hide my replicator now, let me just hide them both. So there's my replicator. Turn it off. Here's my, you know, replicator merged into just a regular uh, item layer. So it's pretty sweet that I've got those replicated uh, fat cells just as polygons now or capital arc services in just a single... Um, you know, mesh operator, you know, mesh item layer, and I can do what I want to with them now. And what I'm going to do really is just kind of keep it. I just want to keep this um, procedural, right? So if I make a change to the replicator or any of the you know particle random modifier or something like that, or change the size, that's gonna f you know flow all the way back up to my merge cell. So there's you know there's a nice connection going here. To my merge meshes and so any any changes I make are going to wind up in this mesh item here. Uh, so I'm going to right click and do freeze mesh operations. I'm going to duplicate and freeze because I want to run a particle simulation on these or, or a physics simulation on these but I do want to um, duplicate it and freeze it so I'm just dealing with simple uh, polygons now. So this still exists if I ever want to change again if I ever want to change anything here. I can always go back and and you know freeze this again, so that's why we're keeping it procedural. But right now we're just going to deal with this item right here, these merged fat cells, and I'm just going to call them fat cells, and um, you know they're just uh, polygons, right? So basically, I've just collapsed everything down into a layer of, of these Capital Clark uh, surfaces. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is right click and do this cool little function here in Moto where you can say unmerge mesh. And this will unmerge the mesh, create a new mesh item for every polygon island. So if I click that, all my fat cells here become, um, we'll go to item mode, multiple items. So I've got multiple items here and I'm just going to control G to group that and do fat cells group or grupo because I like that typo. Um, okay, so let's... For right now, I'm actually gonna right click and re whoops, I don't think I need all of these guys in my schematic at the moment. No, 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 that's fine. I'll do this. This is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, they could just hang out there. Um, back to the tutorial. So I've got them all as individual items now. And I want to run, you know, add, make them into soft bodies so I can run my physics simulations. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say this little um, bone joint icon is the setup tab. And I'm going to click that, go to dynamics, and I'm going to make all of these soft bodies. So they're all soft bodies now. You can see my little dynamics there. You also notice that there's a uh, dynamic uh, soft, you know, tab here now with soft bodies active. And we're getting close. I do want to add a couple of things or adjust the solver a little bit. First, I'm going to turn off gravity. Do not need gravity for this one. And I'm going to add a radial force. And I'm going to turn the radial strength. I'm actually, let me keep it here at 100% right now just to show you this. So these little green arrows down here are our simulation controls. This um, one on the far left here, the unfilled uh, play triangle just plays the simulation in perpetuity. It'll just kind of keep playing it, keep playing it. You can actually keep it active while you make changes to the simulation, so it's really useful that way. The screen one right here is gonna play it along with any sort of keyframed animation. It'll just play it over the timeline. And the last one here actually calculates and caches the simulation. So if I hit the middle one here, it's gonna play it across the timeline and it just, all our soft bodies get crunched down into a little ball and it's not what we want at all. So I'm gonna stop that. And I'm going to turn the strength way down to like 1% for our radial uh, force there and hit play again. A little bit better. So we're sucking things together and you kind of see what's going on here. And they're sort of crunching these uh, fat cells together like we might like them. Okay, so let me stop that and do a little bit more work with the fat cells themselves. So I'm going to select all the fat cells and looking at the dynamic tab and the soft body. Structures at 95%. This will sort of um, keep the structural integrity of the of the cells. I'm gonna knock that down to like 
maybe 50%. And I'm going to turn on self collision. And I'm going to turn up pressure just a little bit to plump them up. And volume uh, con conservation, I'm going to add just a little bit so we can keep their shape. Drag, I'm actually going to add a little bit. And it'll essentially act as a drag uh, force here, just like this drag force in the simulation. It'll add drag to the, to the physical forces there. So maybe bump that up just a little bit. And one thing you'll notice is that the force of the radial, you know, uh, our radial force here is is really concentrated around the center and it really affects things close in and so i'm going to add a fall off to that so if you select both these guys and then add them into our uh, schematic you'll see that the solver of course is connected to all these uh, fat cells here that's great um and here's our radial force connected to the solver as well and this has a slot for a fall off i'm going to add a radio fall off in here there it is right there, and there it is right there. Again, you can grab, you know, shift, uh, click all the radius channels, press C for channel hall, and drag it out. And then I'm going to invert it, so, and knock down the strength, you know, quite a bit. <clears throat> Basically what I'm doing is I'm just attenuating that uh, force in the center a little bit, just making it a little more even across, you know, the radius here, as, you know, so these guys on the outside get pulled in. Um, as much as these guys in the center, or at least maybe not as much, but you know what I mean. Like they're getting a little more force. These guys in the center are getting a little less force because I inverted this fall off. So less in the center, more at the edges. Okay, great. Let's run the simulation again. And I'll do the far left triangle this time just to kind of keep a keep a watching and I'll toggle off the locators here, maybe toggle off the grid. And uh, so that's kind of cool, kind of squishing them together, but they're really not deforming I'm getting a little bit of deformation with these guys, but maybe not quite as much as I want. So let's uh, loosen up their structural integrity just a little bit. So again, it's just sort of a playing around with the settings a little bit, maybe 15% here, uh, maybe 5% here, and then we'll play it again. Just want them to squish together nicely. I need auto save. Looking okay, not bad, getting some decent squishiness. And let me knock down the drag just a little bit and turn up the radial force just a little bit here. Let me do one more. Okay, so getting some pretty good squishiness there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna hit the far right triangle and it's going to calculate the entire simulation. All 150 frames of it. There we go, and then if I scrub through, there's my simulation. And then what I can do here is just kind of pick a frame that I like. I'm just sort of scrubbing through here. And so let's say I like this one. So I'm gonna use this merge mesh trick again. So again, I'm gonna create, um, just press in for a new mesh item, right? And then we're gonna call it uh, merge uh, fat cells final or something clever like that. Let me just drag it um, up here. And then we want to, of course, add the merge mesh mesh op again. Merged meshes. And then we want to add some sources and uh, click on fat cells, I believe. Which ones are they? Is it uh, fat cells there all the way to 16? Right. So add sources and shift click. And I'm just going to drag them all over here. And there's all our sources are in there. Now, if I actually hide the fat cells, you'll see just this single mesh item again, but it retains the cache dynamics. It's really pretty damn cool. Merge message, merge meshes. Sound like, sound like Trump. United States. Merge meshes. Very powerful mesh operation. Very powerful mop, mesh op. Anyway, so I like frame 60 because that's my favorite one. And I'm going to go to freeze mesh operations. And uh, again, duplicate and freeze, you can do that. So we hide the uh, procedure one and we've got just our final set of uh, fat cells, fat cell layer, how about that, right here. And that's, uh, that's our fat cell layer, kind of all squished together. 
then what you can do, what I did in the other one, is I just sort of um, duplicated it and you know moved another one down here and spun it around. Of course, I had a, a lot more cells than the last one, but here you can see like get that getting that sort of variation right off uh, from you know using some dynamics and mesh operations and things like that. Kind of looks like fat cells. Now you too can create this delicious fat cell sandwich. That's it. Yum, yum!